Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Don and Graham Builds. This is going to be the first in a series of remodeling my master bathroom. The first thing on the list is going to be the shower. This is a pretty mediocre, contractor grade finished shower and we can do a whole lot better. So if you wanna see how we took this and turned it into this. We took that old, ugly, mediocre shower insert, tore it out and replaced it with this new, beautiful, mid-century modern inspired shower with clean black lines, nice subway tile, and nice hexagon floor tile, and new fixtures. Now, if you wanna see exactly how I did it, and you wanna know how much all the things cost, be sure to follow along, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna give you a breakdown of all the different components, how much time it took, how much money each thing costs, and then you can decide if you can do this DIY on your own budget. Without any further ado, Let's roll the music. All right, fam, and just like with any home renovation project, the first step is gonna be a little demolition. So let's grab the hammer, let's grab the pry bar and the oscillating multi-tool and get to work. Okay. So we've got the shower door off. It was in time last month, so I'm not sure if you saw it, but the side panels that cover the water from the sides when the door's swinging open and closed, one of those shattered, uh, which is surprising and kind of cool. I thought it would break like slowly, like glass normally does, like a crack here, crack there. And it was more like the back windshield of a car just exploded. So that was cool. I'll see if I can slow that down enough that you can see it. I'll put a clip in this video. Uh, but now it's time to take out the shower insert. Now the way shower inserts are installed they do it before they do the drywall. So on the side here, there's a flange that comes out from. And of course, in typical fashion, this is right where my camera mic died. Basically, all I'm saying here is that on the edge of the insert itself, there is a fiberglass flange that comes off of the insert and the installers will use that flange to screw directly into the studs and secure the insert in place. Here I'm pointing out where those are and the fact that you can just use a screw gun, back those screws out, and in some cases, wiggle the insert out if there's enough room. In my case, however, there was not enough room and we had to break out the multi-tool and the hammer and get to work tearing this bad boy apart. glasses, pants, long sleeve, this fiberglass stuff gets into the air and then it'll land and get into your pores and it gets very irritating very quickly. So definitely protect yourself. Uh, also, dust mask, not non-negotiable. You definitely need one. Uh, all right, the next step is going to be hanging the hardy board, filling out where we're gonna put our niche and waterproofing this whole area. That way we can start our tiling. Another thing, I thought that I could take the whole unit out and then just like wiggle it around our door frames and through our hallways because if they got it in here, then I can get it out was my thinking. I don't think that they did that. I'm guessing that they, whenever they frame the exterior walls of the house, they bring in the tub or shower insert that they're going to use. They put it in what's going to be the bathroom. They frame around it and then they just kind of slide it into the niche. I'm not sure if that's the exact way, but I can't think of another way to get that in here. It did not fit through the door. So if you're in a construction crew or you're familiar with this process, leave a comment down below and let me know if I'm on the right track or if you guys do something totally different. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, the next step is going to be waterproofing. So we're gonna look at hanging our hardy board. We're gonna figure out which side we want our niche to get on. Our water supply is coming from the bottom corner next to the tub because there's also water going to the tub. So it might be easier instead of trying to reconfigure this to just move the shower head and the uh, faucet control over here this side. I'll talk to this and see what we want to do. The jury's still out, but we've got some options. We've got our niche that we're going to put in, and now it's time to waterproof. So first step is going to be hardy board. Let's do that. And right now I feel like is a great time to note that I am not a tile guy. I'm not really used to working with water supplies or drainage for that matter. I'm just a DIY guy. So hardy board was definitely not the next step. The next step was taking the plumbing that was running underneath the shower pan and getting it rerouted through the studs. That way we could tile our floor without the water supply getting in the way. I also went ahead and added some furring strips on the studs. That way when we hung the hardy board, it was flush with the existing drywall and not inset. So we're learning as we go. Let's keep this train moving. Oh, that's gonna be 
Sure. There we go. Here's an idea. While we're hanging out being dumb. It does not need to be on there yet. No oh, everything's going horribly wrong. Mm. This is the reality of what happens when you're DIY and stuff. So <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go through this really quickly. Um, sorry about the bad lighting, but uh, the original plumbing, you should just go underneath the fiberglass insert and up, and that clearly won't work since we're gonna be tiling the floor and we have a flat shower pan. So we popped an elbow into both of our PEX pipes, ran them around, notched out the corners, drilled holes through, brought them over here and took them up. Now you can see I'm kind of mixed matching colors all around. That's because the original people made it red for hot, white for cold, and then I accidentally attached the opposite colors. So I corrected it up here. So if somebody ever sees this later on, they're gonna be confused, but laugh. Uh, Cause it doesn't matter. The colors, all, they all function the same. They're just different colors. Uh, and then it goes up to the shower head. The water is back on. We don't have any leaks, which is good. Another thing to note is uh, for our hardy board, we needed to fur out the studs a little bit further. That way the depth between the drywall surface and the stud surface was the right amount to fit our hardy backer up there and be flush. That way we're tiling out from there. So. Next up will be to hang the hardy board and then we can look at putting in the shower proofing system. I promise we're going to get to the hardy board here shortly, but we decided to do a footrest instead of a bench. So I wanted plenty of material to bite into instead of having to mess around with drywall anchors. So I installed that backer board there on the back left corner. That way when we went to install the board, everything was nice and secure. Now we are finally up to hanging the hardy board and we're going to use these hardy board design screws, the backer on model, and you can use any brand. They all work about the same. And we're just marking the stud locations and putting a screw in about every 16 inches, the same way you would do with drywall. The cool thing about hardy board is this does not have to be perfect. As long as you've got the areas covered and it is flat, then you're pretty well good to go. On the back wall, we decided to install a niche. So I did take some scrap two by four material and make a frame that for the niche to sit in. Smudge that in nice and easily. Uh, one thing to be important here as you're attaching your frame, make sure that the edge or the lip of the niche is gonna be flush with the hardy board. Once that was figured out, we could secure that in place and continue putting the hardy board in. Now it's time to do the shower proofing. The kit we decided to use is the Verver Shower Curb Kit. I found it on Amazon. It's about 230 bucks depending on your size shower. And it is notably cheaper than the Curdy version, which is that orange one you see on the counter there. That one runs about $500. So this will definitely be a huge cost savings benefit for you. Okay, so bear with me because this is a small area, a tight shot, and I'm kind of a bigger guy. So it's gonna be a little tight, but I'm gonna try to explain what's going on here. So we took out the shower insert, obviously. We routed the plumbing through the studs, that way it's not going underneath the shower pan. Most shower pans will have a negative space underneath it, that's why the drain's so high, and you can run the plumbing underneath, typically. But in our case, we're tiling the floor, so there's no room for the water, so we had to run it through the walls. Now, that being said, here's our kit that came with, or our shower pan that came with the kit. We're gonna move that aside for right now. And as you noticed earlier, there's this huge hole, hopefully my knee's not, blocking the shot here, a huge hole in the concrete. And I was really confused when I saw this, so I had to do a little bit of research and I found out that this is basically just a uh, concrete box out that the foundation guys will do in the general vicinity where the plumbing's going to be, and there's this huge cavity underneath. Again, that does not matter when you have a shower pan because the shower pan's fiberglass is sturdy enough to hold you. This foam sheet is not. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is cut our pipe to the right depth using a reference from the foam in, or the foam pan. And then we're going to backfill this mostly with pre -gravel, uh, pea gravel, and then we're gonna top coat it, probably the top four inches or so, with quick creek concrete. That way it's nice and sturdy and it can support the weight of someone standing there. Because the last thing we want is to do this whole shower, tile the floor, someone stand right here, and the foam pan give out, break the tile, slice a foot, just all kinds of bad things. So we're gonna do it right. We're gonna pea gravel, and then we're going to quick creep with this just basic concrete that you would use on like a fence post outside. It doesn't need to be fancy. It's gonna be underneath here. It just needs to be supportive, which it will be. So let's do that. All right, guys, I would be totally lying to you if I said I was not nervous by this part. I, again, I'm not familiar with this. I have no idea that this big hole would be here. But again, after a little bit of research, we figured out what we need to do and we moved forward. So in this case, I cut it down to make sure that the drain was at the proper height and that it was level 
plugged the drain with a just paper towel to make sure that pea gravel or concrete didn't get in there. Hit it with two bags of pea gravel and I think three total bags of Quick Creek concrete. And just like a fence post, you don't need to mix this beforehand. Just pour it in there and then add water and stir it up with a mixing stick and that'll get you where you need to be. It'll solidify and become totally structurally sound. So we went ahead and backfilled our uh, concrete box out with just, like I said, pea gravel and some quick creek concrete. It ended up taking two and a half bags, so it's, it's a lot deeper uh, than I originally thought, but no big deal. It's like 16 bucks. So that's filled in. I put a spacer in there. That way the flange... One second. Sorry for the bad camel, camera work. I'm a professional. <laughs> the uh, flange and outside diameter will fit inside the inside diameter of that. Uh, so even if, if that's rubber, I think I can just pull that out of there. If not, I could probably cut it, but I, it should fit just fine even if I don't move it. So we'll give that a day to cure, and then we can turn our attention to waterproofing, which is going to be our waterproof membrane, our edge banding stuff, and our shower pan. So we're moving along. And thankfully, that little insert came out without any issue whatsoever, and it left me plenty of room to get the drain in. The next step is going to be mixing up our thin set. I made sure to get one that can handle wallboard and a waterproof membrane. Mix it up really well and then start it in on the drain. The drain actually needs to go in first. Uh, if you'll remember when I showed you the insert itself, there was that white ring in the center right there. I cut that piece out, put thin set on the floor and then put thin set on the top of that and wedged it in. And that is the proper way to install this type of drain. There's not a lot of videos that highlight that well. So hopefully that is helpful. Moving on next, I wanted to do the walls with the thin set before I did the floor. So just using a quarter inch trowel, which is what the manufacturer recommends, I attached the membrane and just slowly worked my way around the whole shower, working around that niche and just using a putty knife to smear it all out, putting the excess back in the bucket, of course, and get everything nice and tight. Once that was done, we could apply it to the floor, follow the exact same process, drop the floor pan in place. And because of those spacers that we put first, the bottom of the shower pan in the center meets with that drain with just the right degree of slope. That way water can drain out without an issue. We're going to attach the shower curb the exact same way, push that in place, and then we can start working on attaching the membrane along all of the seams. All right, so I got a little ahead of myself and I think the camera died, but we'll do a quick recap here. Basically, all the waterproof membrane is now installed. We're overlapping it with thin set. Where the wall meets the floor, there's a stretcher piece. Uh, it's just a six inch wide seam. And you can see one comes from the back wall to the side wall and then meets in the corner. And then they prefabricate inside corner pieces to put down in this kit, which is super handy. Those all came together really, really well. It was actually pretty easy to do. All the corners look nice. And then also our drain comes with a rounded circle that slopes downward, which is obviously very important considering this is a shower and water needs to drain out. Then we got our shower curb installed and we made sure that we sloped it inward. That way when water hits it, it slides in the shower and not out of the shower, which was an issue we were having with our previous shower. So the next step is to test our work and do waterproofing test. All right guys, I'm super excited. I got the shower all waterproofed and you have to do a leak test. This is where you fill it up with like seven, eight gallons of water uh, and then maybe playing with buckets, and then let it sit for 24 hours to see if it drops below the line. And my ours did not drop at all, I'm super pumped. All right, so check this out. I got the water in here. You can't tell because it's not moving, but there's my reference line and maybe hard to see on camera, but it has not dipped below the bottom of that reference line this whole time. So we have a waterproof shower pan. Amy, can you say waterproof? <laughs> waterproof sounds close enough. So we're gonna drain this and we will be ready to start tiling. Now we wanted to start off with the floor of our shower first. So we're using these 12 by 12 hexagon tiled sheets. Uh, they come just in batches. They're really easy to work with for the most part. I like to lay them out first and get all my cuts figured out ahead of time before I start using thin set. One issue I did know is that keeping the spacing in between the sheets was okay, but keeping the spacing in between the individual pieces was a little bit more difficult. They don't stay on their own. Something to keep in mind if you give these a try. Okay, so we're finally at the point where we can start laying our tile. Now, courtesy of my Instagram followers, we are gonna use a four by 12 subway tile to do the walls. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go check it out. You'll follow the whole process step by step as I'm doing it in stores, which is pretty fun. And you'll catch all the headaches in the middle of the process. So. If you're anything like me, and I'm not a tile guy, I'm just a DIY guy with a YouTube channel, and I haven't even been doing that for that long, then your surface is probably not gonna be totally level, because mine's not. 
Now, what's most important is the first row of tile because everything you do after that builds on that first row. So we need to take a laser level and you can pick one of these up for 50 or so bucks at a big box store. I know it's a little spendy, but you'll, it'll, it'll save your life. Definitely grab one. Use your laser level, set it in place, turn it on, and obviously you'll have to adjust the height to where it's the same height as the tile you're using, but then score all your tiles as needed on the bottom using an angle grinder to cut off disc or a tile saw, whatever you have, and make sure that the top of your first row of tiles all lines up on that laser. That way, as you're building up, everything is perfectly level and you don't end up with weird diagonal gaps and ugly things at the top of the wall. So we're gonna get our laser level set up, we're gonna score and cut our tiles. You're doing a 50% offset. And I'm just using this real cheap tile cutter I picked up at my big box store. I think it was like 25 bucks. And all it does is score the tile, applies a little bit of pressure and it'll crack it in two. And we'll do a 50% offset all the way around. And we'll make sure we install our side rails. That way we have a nice clean edge facing the rest of the bathroom. So let's get to work. And here's just a close up of what I was just talking about. I wanna to be totally transparent with you guys. My work's not perfect, uh, but we can do some extra things to make it come out really nice. And again, that's just grinding the bottom of those tiles to make sure the top line of that bottom row is totally flat and level. Um, so once you get that done, everything else tends to move a lot faster. I'd say usually give yourself about two to three rows of tiles worth of adhesive on the wall and then just drop the tiles in. Uh, that way you're not doing ones and twos. You can do probably five or six at a time, then put the spacers in after the fact. Uh, and I am using a tile adhesive. Um, Jeff from Home Renovations, who's like the king of renovations, uh, says that it's okay to use tile adhesive in showers. It's approved for wet areas. Thin set might be better, but I had some extra um, adhesive left over and decided to use that and it's working out just fine. Like I said, we got those trim pieces installed. That way we can have a nice clean edge on the outside of our tile and we continue to work our way up the wall on each wall of the shower. Just make sure you take your time when you get to tricky areas such as the faucet control or even the niche if you have one. I've never done it before, so it's definitely a good learning opportunity for all of us. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a surefire sign of an inexperienced Tyler. Mistakes were made. Yep, so I made a mistake there, but that's okay. We made it work. Uh, what you can do and what you can take away from my mistake is measure from the floor up to whereabouts you want your uh, niche to be, and then do some math and figure out how many rows of tiles it'll take. And you can move that up just a little bit or down just a little bit and make sure that your niche starts and stops on a full row of tiles and you don't have to deal with any slivers. One thing I did want to throw out about this insert from uh, Curdy, it, it's a really nice piece. I'll link it down below, but that middle bar is about two and a quarter inches thick. It's really, really big. So by the time you get it all installed, you really don't have a lot of real estate for shampoo bottles or conditioner bottles or whatever. There's only about eight inches in each shelf, which is a pretty tight space. Um, so the one thing you could do is to rip that into a thinner, maybe an inch thick and buy yourself a little bit more room or just get rid of it all together and just go with one big open niche. Okay, so we are almost to the point where we're ready to grout, but we are running into a handful of issues. Sorry if the audio is bad, it's echoey in here. Um, the first issue is when I was laying out the waterproofing membrane in the thin set along the sides and along the top, it went further than I was planning to tile. Uh, I didn't do a lot of measurements. Better planning would have probably saved some headaches on this point. So there's all of this kind of debris and leftover thin set all around the edges here. And I don't know the best way to get it off. I've got two ideas. A I'm just going to use a sander because drywallers use sandpaper and sanders to kind of break down drywall mud all the time and I think that should work the same way. If that fails, then we can do like 8th to 16 inch material and just frame everything out and run a bead of silicone in it. I don't want to do that, but that's a decent fallback. So let's throw on 120, maybe 220 grit, hit this a little bit and see how it does. The second issue we're running into is our trim pieces along the sides. Uh, also got thin set on them and while I was scrubbing the thin set off, I had to paint these because they didn't have black ones in the store. The thin set was coming off, but it was taking the paint with it. So I'll need to repaint these. So I'm not going to worry about taping it off since I'll have to paint it anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this with the sander. I'll scratch this up. It'll be fine. And we'll work our way around. So just like any project, we're going to run into headaches and we're going to see it through. Let's keep working. Okay, two things. One, that works surprisingly well. I mean, a little bit of touch of paint on the wall and touch of paint on the trim, and I think we're off to the races. Two, I should definitely be wearing a respirator. My 
standard switch up to a shop vac, but if you try this, definitely, definitely wear a respirator, even with the shop vac. It's just, it's not enough. All right, we are officially on to grouting. Uh, this is stain proof stuff I picked up from my local big box store, and best of all, it does not need sealing, which would be a whole nother step, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. Uh, but we got this applied, just use a foam uh, trowel and work it in at about a 45 degree angle in each of the little crevices. And then most importantly, do not, I repeat, do not wait for it to completely dry to come back and clean it all off. You'll end up with a huge mess like this one. I am embarrassed to say the number of hours I spent scrubbing and chiseling grout off of these tiles. Thankfully, it all came together, but my goodness, what a tremendous waste of time. I'd say give it about 10, maybe 15 minutes, and then come back and wipe it off. I would even say shorter than that. Wipe it off as soon as you can without getting it out of the grout line itself and just save yourself the massive headache that I had to deal with. But eventually, with that nightmare behind us, we were ready to run our silicone beads. I like to tape everything off and uh, run the bead and then follow up with my finger with just a little bit of water to smooth out the silicone bead. It makes it look nice and clean. And then you can pull the tape away and you'll have a nice, clean, even finish. Once I got the silicone run, I gave it about 24 hours to cure and then I came back, taped everything off and hit those trim pieces with a couple coats of black spray paint. As I mentioned before, in lieu of doing a full shower bench, which would have cost extra real estate, I opted to use a footrest that way my wife could still shave her legs in the shower. I marked out these holes using a laser level and then I came back with a brad point bit just to dent the tile a little bit so my masonry bit didn't wander on me. Once I drilled through, I took the tape off. Here's the little mounting plate. It came with, I think, inch and a half screws, which isn't bad, but when you factor in we're going through tile, thin set, hardy board, and then into that stud, we wanted something a little bit more sturdy, so I replaced those with some bigger screws, got these secured in place, and then the footrest itself just secures onto these little pegs with a couple of set screws. Really, really clean option to have a place to shave your legs without having to have a whole tile bench. And again, this saves money on the materials to build a bench as well as the time it takes. So great option, I'll throw a link down below. And the last and final process in this was installing the shower door. To be totally honest, I was really intimidated by this. I'd never installed a shower door. I assumed it would be very hard, but the instructions that came with the kit were really straightforward. And I got this installed in about 45 minutes without too much difficulty. Um, the last thing I did after that was attach the fixtures. Uh, however, I seem to have lost the footage for that, but I mean, you've seen people attach a shower head before, so that's not overly concerning. Once I get this fully installed, we can take you over to that smooth B-roll and we can finally talk about the numbers around this shower. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's video. Thank you so much for following along. If you made it all the way to the end, I'm assuming it's because you wanna know how much everything costs, and I've got it right here. I kept track of everything, all the random trips to the hardware store, all the big components, all the little components. I've got Amazon affiliate links down below for most of these items, so be sure to check those out if you like them. And without any further ado, let's run through this list. So for the subway tile, the floor tile, the thin set, the grout, and the floats and the trowels, that all came out to $555. Miscellaneous items such as putty knives, silicone, blue tape, different things you need that you don't really think of is about 85 bucks. The shower door itself, shower doors are very expensive, was $565. The shower niche from Curdy was $80. All the new fixtures came out to $80. The footrest was $70. The hardy board and the screws was $50. Concrete and pea gravel hit us for 30. All the plumbing came out to 110. And the waterproofing membrane system that we used, again, Amazon link below, was $265, which is a steal because the curdy one, the orange one that's supposed to be top of the line, and I'm sure it's nice, is $600. So if you want to save a little bit of money on waterproofing, I cannot recommend this system enough. That brought our total project out to $1,820. Now I know that's not a small amount of money. However, I called a local contractor to see how much he would charge me to do this job. And I told him exactly what I did. I ripped out the insert, I rerouted plumbing, I did hardy board, I did waterproofing, tile, hexagon tile, new fixtures, and a niche, and he said that would be about $8,000, if you can believe that. This is money in the bank, folks. 
eight thousand dollars i'm gonna do this whole bathroom for under three without a doubt in my mind and this is just money in the bank for when we go to sell our house on the back end so now you know and hopefully with this information you can decide if you want to tackle your own diy shower remodel hopefully this video was helpful hopefully you guys enjoyed the ride remember to like comment subscribe do all the things and we'll see you in the next one